Every day I appreciate being here in Setakama. It's an incredibly wild place. So there's, there's a huge amount of untouched wilderness here, which is one of the few places where there is still untouched wilderness. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of an adventure. It's, uh, it's a little bit more in the wilderness. It's a little bit more unknown. We are situated here at the base of Africa's second largest lagoon. So we sit on a, on a river stretch that drains a lagoon that is 75 by 55 kilometers. So it's a huge body of water that this river next to us drains. This entire lagoon system drains through a mouth and with Gabon being a relatively like monotonous coastline, um, anything form of structure, i.e. the river mouth, tends to draw predators from far and wide. As for the jungle itself here, we're in a, a lower section of jungle. It's not as big as the high jungle of the interior of Gabon, but we have a canopy that stretches from here hundreds of k's into the interior. It's a beautiful, beautiful forest. We've learned to kind of fish with our head on a swivel. You've got to really be aware of what's around you. You've got to know at all times where the big animals are, if there are big animals around. We've not had any incidences, um, uh, but that's due to vigilance on our, on our behalf. When you see that big bull elephant walking down the beach towards you, and you've got your, your eight anglers are thigh deep in water, oof, it becomes a bit sweaty. You need to get them out of that beach and onto the boat as quickly as possible. Coupled with that is we've got a lot of bull sharks. It's a healthy, healthy fishery and a sign of a healthy fishery is bull sharks. Any sort of shark. So we've got a ton of bull sharks here. To be very conscious of how deep we're walking. Um, yeah, keeping a close eye on the clients, making sure none of them get too deep for the sharks. And also if they get swept out, there's big currents. And if they go out the mouth, um, big problems. So the jack blitzers are a special thing here. You'll see these, these mullet running for their lives. I mean, when I say running, they are they're tail walking to the shore to get somewhere shallow where a jack can't find them and eat them. Here we get the long fin jacks and we get the jack ravels. The jack ravels are more oceanic and a lot less common than the long fins. Um, but they are very special fish. A lot stronger, I'd say, and they get a lot bigger. Um, kind of the GT of Gabon. You get a lot of jacks coming and chasing mullet, push them up against the banks or throw them into a ball in the middle of the river. You just see these fins out of the water, slashing, weaving, bobbing. And then absolutely wreck them. You just see a massive big swirl and explosion of water. Coming out of the water, they're pretty much like a pack attack of GTs, um, exploding on bait. Heard those mullet up against the edges and they just hammer them become wild and they just stay wild.
mean, you look at those colors, especially one that's been in the lagoon for a while. They're a jungle camo version of a GT. True, they don't get to 40 kilos, but hey, the 20 kilo one's gonna keep you super busy. So our schedule here in Setakama is hugely varied, depending on tide, depending on target fish, depending on change of light. When it rains here, the rain picks up all the tannins from the rotting vegetation in the, um, in the forest, flushes it into the system, turning the water brown, but that brown water brings in bait fish who come in to feed on the on the on the particulate in the in the water and when there's bait fish there's big fish we will always try and incorporate a change of light into our fishing day be it morning or evening it can be one of the most productive times of the day second to that we operate around our tides so there are certain tides and tidal and periods in our tidal swing which fish really well in, in various areas of the river mouth. The downside to that is there's no, we can't give you a, a structured day that says at six o'clock we go fishing and at four in the afternoon we are back here. There's constantly changing. Sometimes we're getting up and going fishing at one in the morning, two in the morning. We, we don't stick to a, a set structure, rather we fish what the tides are telling us to fish. So the fishing at night here in, in Gabon is a huge part of our fishing. It's so when we're at our most successful. For a lot of people, this fishing in the dark is a complete, completely new experience and it puts them off for a day or two. It can take you a while to find your feet. But once you do, I mean, it's, it, it actually, you know, you think it would take away from the excitement, but it builds excitement. You don't know when you're going to get that hit. Often you'll hear fish smashing around you. If you're casting into a really good location, you know it could be any cast. Fish is gonna, a fish, and it could be a fish of a lifetime, takes your fly. And the, the, the take at night is electric. It's far, it's far better than taking the day because it's all reactive. The best tarpon fishing nights we have are when you find that the jacks are herding the mullet into the edge of the bank. And when I say herding, it is, they are herding them. It's, like they, they run them all the way to the edge and then smash them on the edge. And what ends up happening is that the tarpon, when they come in a little bit later, they end up coming in closer because of that. So what we really want to see as you arrive down to the mouth is those jacks pushing bait right up to the edge. That bait stays there and then when the tarpon in, come in, they come in well within fly casting range. say to clients that tarpon is probably the most stressful situation you're ever going to be in. That first jump you think he's going to throw you, second jump you think he's going to throw you. Then he takes a lot of life. You're not seeing the take and, and preempting the strike you are feeling and just next thing you know your line disappears at a rate of knots you didn't think was possible. Suddenly you start understanding when a tarpon is um, around you can it's a different it's a different feeling different sound in the water that thing when it eats i've never seen line clear that quickly it's incredible the, the, the line in your hand is, is gone in milliseconds my stripping glove was shred um, and then and then it's just hanging on the beach the sea you could be on the moon
when um, the guy touched the fish, it was pure relief and, and you know, completely, uh, I was just ecstatic and um, an unbelievable moment. I'll never forget it in my entire life. Gabon is an interesting country with regards to conservation. So it's a country that's hugely investing in protection of its wildlife. We are on the start of the Loango National Park, the southern tip of that national park. So these fish and these animals are incredibly well protected. Not only do they do these protections exist in law, but they're also vigorously enforced by, by law enforcement here and by the the national park rangers. If they find people poaching and they have straight, you know, arrested straight to jail, they, they run poaching patrols constantly throughout this park. And it's, um, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see. It gives you hope for the future of this place. From the, <laughs> From the moment I, I started kind of really digging into, into what this country is about and what goes on here, oh, it had me, it had me hooked. And um, yeah, there's been very few, very few, very few days that I, I don't, this is not the place I want to be, even in the off season. You know, you think, <laughs> you end up dreaming about the mouth, things that go on here, the things you've seen, the, oh, it's a spectacular. It's a spectacular location and you know, I, I can't get enough of it. Mm -hmm.